all around the world, you see this recurring theme in different cultures, and it's described in different ways, but exactly the same in theme. We have a force, an expression of this Watiko that takes a reptilian form. And the cultures around the world, again and again and again, when they're doing their creation myths, then some kind of reptilian, lizard-like, snake-like entities are described. So if you take the biblical version, you have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve are symbolic of, first of all, what humans were like before what became known as the Fall. What the hell was the Fall? The way I've seen this is that there was once not something that you'd call human. It was a state of consciousness that was experiencing a world, a frequency band that was like the one we're experiencing, but on a much higher level of awareness, consciousness, frequency. So things weren't happening in dense matter and, and low, slow frequencies. They were happening on a high frequency. Things were much more ethereal. And that, I think, is what's described as this paradise that went before. And so Adam and Eve were cast out of paradise. What does that mean, I would suggest? They left that frequency level where what we now call humans were, were experiencing. A, a world of love, of joy, of happiness, of, of all the things that happen when you get into high frequency states where so much more is possible. And they fell, the fall was down the frequencies into dense matter. And the villain in the Garden of Eden that is said to have been part of this or central to this is the snake. People have to think symbolically. I mean, this is not a snake that can talk. This is symbolic of this reptilian group, not just one person, this reptilian group, these reptilian gods as they were perceived. And they fell down the frequencies, Adam and Eve, symbolic of what's now humanity, because they gain the knowledge of good and evil. What is good and evil? It's polarity. It's the polarity that we, we see in our reality now. That level that we fell from was oneness, it was unity. And we fell into the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of polarity, which is what this world is. And my view, and it has been for a lot, a lot of years now, is that what Genesis is describing is the takeover of human perception by this reptilian force. And the God at the start of Genesis that is creating the world is actually an amalgamation to deceive and misdirect of the gods, the reptilian gods. And what's being described is not the creation of the world, but the creation of the simulation, the matrix. Um, and so when we hear lines like, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, I say what's being described is electromagnetic light, which is basically what this uh, simulation is. And I said just after the turn of the millennium that this is a simulation and the walls of it, certainly at our level anyway, are the speed of light which is not the fastest speed possible. That's a joke. We're dealing with all possibility here. <laughs> That's the fastest speed possible. It's a joke. It's the speed of the matrix of the simulation. And there was an article in Scientific American in um, April of this year where some academic said, we live in a simulation and the walls of the simulation are the speed of light. 
And he was relating the speed of light in simulation terms to the processing speed. Because what is, what is physics? What is the law of physics, as, as we call it? It's whatever the creator of the simulation decided it was going to be. What are, in effect, the laws of physics of computer games? They're whatever the creator of the game decides they're going to be. But as this article pointed out, you can create the laws within your game, but you're still going to be limited by the processing speed you're dealing with. And that's why the speed of light is this faster speed. That's why when people have near-death experiences, they leave the body, which is locking us into the simulation through the five senses. And they experience a totally different version of physics, where past, present and future uh, all kind of happen at once in the same now. But within the simulation, we have time. We have all these other illusions, which are the creation of the simulation. So you had this treasure trove of documents that were found at Nagamadi uh, in um, 1945, about 75 miles north of Luxor in Egypt, which was an earthen jar of the writings of the Gnostic people. And it's reckoned that they were put in that jar 400 AD, something like that. And about a fifth of these writings were about what they called archons, which is Greek for rulers, um, who were manipulating human society and what they say in these writings is that this world is a fake world. It's a fake reality created by this archontic force to enslave humanity in an illusion. I went through all of them and what you see, they're describing a virtual reality universe. That's what they're describing in their own language, what we would call today virtual reality. One of the great things today is that because of the technological advancement, so-called, we've now got the analogies and the, the experience of virtual reality to actually describe what this reality is.